Alright folks, and we're back, playing Sherlock Holmes, the, or the Lost Case Files of Sherlock Holmes. This game is brought to you by .com, and this is your host, Pitchinese88. Let's go play the Death Card Devil. When the great detective faces the supernatural, danger is in the cards. Sweet. Miss Jackson, I understand that you're an American journalist and a... What was that again? A spook spoiler. I'm researching a New York Times feature, one that shall expose the tricks and schemes that phony spiritualists use to exploit the public's fascination with the supernatural. Seances and phantoms and all that rubbish. I have no interest in such things myself, so why come to me? Two nights ago, I was writing in my room up on the fourth floor of the Whittington Boarding House in Russell Square. Suddenly, my window flew open and in leapt a short and devilish creature glowing an unearthly green and accompanied by a cloud of foul smoke. Indeed. It leapt onto my writing desk, snatched my manuscript, and dropped a single tarot card, the death card. It then returned to the window and disappeared, even though there's a four-floor drop to the cobblestones below. Might you've been dreaming? A woman with a writer's imagination. I was as alert as I am here before you. Not only did the experience frighten me, but the death card is obviously a threat of some sinister nature. It sounds like some sort of demonic visitation. Superstitious twaddle, isn't it, Holmes? No mere superstition in this instance. Who or what is threatening you? And why, Miss Jackson? You said the Whittington board house, fourth floor, correct? Dr. Watson and I shall accompany you there. All right, so now we're going to go to Katr Katarina Jackson's room. Okay, 13 clues left. Alright, time to... let's not look too closely. I want to get a more of a broad... There's something oddly intriguing about this poster, Watson. Let's have a closer look, shall we? Eleven masks. Oh, so they are actually masks. Huh. Oh, there's one right there. Right there. Right there. And where's the last one? Right there. Sweet. I'm all. I don't think that did anything. Oh, I've seen this fellow on the stage. A mediocre stage magician. Now moved on to the cult arts, I see. No doubt the pay is better. Uh-huh. Claw marks. What? The tree creature was ghastly. It couldn't have been more than three feet tall and moved unlike any being I've ever seen. In my experience, it's not supernatural beings that leave behind luminous residue. Yeah, I kind of think you're right, Holmes. Looks like something's a little suspicious. Oh, there's an eye. Oh, evil eyes. Okay, I've seen them all. There you go. Those evil eyes blame Brother Stark, the half-praised street preacher who lives in the room beneath. He painted that evil eye during a visit two days ago after he warned me against meddling in the black arts, as he put it. Yeah, she doesn't look like she's going to be too... known. Like, too liked by these people. Your death card warning. I see, Holmes. There are many such deaths decks, each different from any others. It might be useful to discover which tarot deck originated this particular card. Observe, the bottom portion of the card seems to be missing. Oh, there's Watson. Or there's Sherlock Holmes' hat. Saw that. Good, good, good. This one right here. Oh, Black Rose. There's his pipe. Oh, there's three Black Roses. Huh. This might have to go into... I have to zoom in a little bit. But I've really just been checking the bottom, so let's just check. Oh, there's a key. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Mr. Spade, the landlord, gave me those keys when you changed my door lock. He would love nothing more than for me to write a sensational story about the encounter. He could then double the price of any room visited by the terrorizing devil beast. Yeah, I don't think it's him, though. That seems a little too obvious. Okay, I need... 
Oh, I need another envelope. Uh, is this an envelope? No, this is an envelope. Those are invitations to a seance from one of my interview subjects, Mr. Gerald M Mails. He rents the room directly above mine. He owns an occult specialty shop near Covenant Garden. An odd, mousy little man. Okay, now I need to find these, these black roses. I'm thinking they're somewhat like the black roses that were in the other one. I'm really having a hard time with this. This is kind of weird. Normally I can find... It's, I'm not missing like... Normally like two. Oh, there's one. Ah, got one. Okay. So got one. I'm looking for one more black rose. Where could it be? Could it... I didn't really check the sides here. That no, doesn't look like it. Um, not... Oh, there it is. Yeah, I wasn't looking at the top and the bottom. So... Those black roses are an unsubtle message from Mr. Thomas Latimer, one of Ludden's most dashing and impulsive journalists. He asked me to marry him. I refused. He's not taking well. Hey, he looks pretty bad shape. Miss Jackson, that seance in the room above yours. This invitation says that you may bring guests to witness the great Carswell in person. Would the great Sherlock Holmes and I do? Yeah. Invite us. Oh, cool. Um. What is that? Three devil's heads. I'm just gonna click on stuff. Holmes, a glowing creature, foul smoking, can leap to fourth floor windows. Perhaps this time we must accept that the supernatural being is authentic. There we go. Those handbags belong to Lady Alice Porter, the wife of millionaire Sir Edmund Porter. She follows the great Carswells to all of his seances. Uh, two newspapers. There's the pipe. I see you have copies of your newspaper, Miss Jackson. Either the demon was real, or it was an imposter with a purpose as yet unknown. But a third possibility presents itself. You fabricated the entire account in order to meet me. No doubt your newspaper would pay well for an interview. Uh-huh. Not you. Kane. Top hat. Right here. Top hat. And Kane must belong to Carswell's royal adversary, Sir Edmund Porter. 